Welcome to Engelberg, Switzerland, 3,500 feet up in the Alps, not far from Lake Lausanne. A beautiful village renowned in winter for the sheer drama of its ski runs. Imagine bombing down the valley at 100 miles an hour on skis. But for the less sporty, the shops are always a fascinating lure. And Engelberg is a great favorite for the British, albeit we gaze nowadays rather than buy. But you can gaze for free at 200 miles of walks, hiking trails and excursions. They have three swimming pools here, with, of course, the impeccable Swiss sports facilities. The highest mountain is the Tiklis, ascended by funicular railway, then by cable car. And up here, snow and more snow, so that even at the height of summer, the ardent skier can ski. Unless, of course, the schnapps got at you like that poor lass. But here we are. Yodeling and yodeling, you'll hear lots of this tonight. Here is the procession coming down the street between the monastery and the arena where the games are going to be held, led, of course, by the inevitable Swiss cows and the cowbells. Welcome to Engelberg. Angelberg. The peasants are coming in. Lots of games featuring them. The Swiss choir in the background. We've had lots and lots of singing. The three days we've been here. The weather's been abominable, by the way. It's been pouring with rain, and once again, a Swiss heat of international knockout is played out in Denshik rain. But here are the teams. Everybody mixed up together in the cars. The Belgians of Papelstor, the British, represented by Darlington, the Swiss by Gisville, the French come from Schartz, the Germans come from Leonberg, the Dutch from Veldhoven, and as British as they come is Uncle Eddie. Well, of course, tonight's game naturally have got an alpine favor about it because we've got game with snowmen, of course, and we've got some tourists meeting the reaper. We've got a field of mushrooms with an angry bull in it. You'll see some butterflies. You'll hear, of course, a lot of sounds, some idle bites, and the haystack, and the full rouge we're going to call the hungry bear. Well, thank you, Eddie. There are the two presenters, Jean Heiermeyer there on the right. Very famous ex-footballer in Switzerland. On his left is uh, Heidi, his co-presenter, and of course those two on either side need no introduction at all. They are, of course, Gennaro and Guido. It's a very, very colourful scene here tonight. You'll see it unfold as the night goes on. Some great games, the marvellous crowd, the firecrackers bombing off, lots of cowbells knocking about. And here's a joker being played. Now, this is a ritual. I've never seen this before in my life. The jokers are being played on alpen horns, and they have to play them. <laughs> the British joker, of course, on the left, the Belgian on the right, and they have no breath left to blow the alpen horn. Literally, they have to play their joker. So this is very important. We bomb off to 12 points. The flying star for Darlington. And in the background, you see the first game. It's a naked snowman. A game in two heats. And we're going in the second heat. But that's the game. The two fellows from uh, the countries push the snowman, naked up the moment, up the slope, up the mountain. At the top of the slope, you have two teammates, two girls. And they have to affix, in a special order, a nose. There's the nose coming down. Now then, they left through the snowman at the top of the slope and they put on a bow tie. It's all against the clock and we're going in the second heat. The Italians, the Dutch, the Swiss, the Swiss and GCU. They put on the bow tie. That's the bow tie at the top of the ramp for the Dutch. But the Swiss are doing well. They put on next the hat. And last of all to go will be a broom. The time here is absolutely crucial to Darlington. We should do well. We're full of strong men. The Darlington team full of strong boys and highly competitive females too. But this is important. The Italians, the Dutch in the middle and the Swiss. The lasso goes on for the Italians of Aosta. In the middle, the Dutch of Belthoven. And that's the Italians finishing. That's the Italians moment coming in to finish. So the Swiss have dropped Atlanta somewhere. We're coming up for 1.30. 1.30 about. And that is a fast time. That's the Swiss finishing. The Italians first, the Swiss second. 
Now the Dutch in all sorts of trouble at the top. That's Iosta. A wonderful team, these Italians. They've uh, really put a light Engelberg in the last three days they've been here. Very, very friendly people. And of course the Swiss are in our friendship too. The Italians, the little mountain village of Iosta. And that's the conclusion of the game. It's a two-minute game. So now we shall watch the times going up. The Belgians and the British playing the Jokers. Das ist das Resultat der, des ersten Durchganges. Wir haben äh, für Italien eine Minute und 30 Sekunden. Für Aosta? Oh, very, very fast. 130 for Aosta on the Italy. Für Israel, the Swiss, 134. Und für Holland, and for Belfort, only two items placed on the snowman. Two elements for scoring, the fastest time, or how many of the four elements, the nose, the tie, the hat, the broom you put on. But now the British are going on the right. So it's up to John Brockbanks and Jeffrey Graham to get there. Oh, it's well up. That's well up. And the girls at the top, Margaret Davison and Kay Metcalf, have to get the nose on. Come on, you have to pull it a bit closer to you. It's important, if you're playing your joker early on, to get in some points. The team captain pushes back to John and Jeffrey. The French in trouble. The Belgians well up with the clock. They put on the bow tie, but the boys are throwing well. On goes the bow tie. We're against the clock. We're coming up now to 35 seconds. We're up with the time of the Italians. We're doing well. We could be in the points. We could be in 12 points. What a wonderful start it's been. Darling's is a very good team. We fence them very strongly, Eddie and I. We always do the British team, but especially Darlington. Good, strong boys, and we'll need good, strong boys on these games tonight. So how are we doing? Up it goes, third time, they dropped it. Oh, and down comes one of our girls. Come on, back up to the top. That's, that's hard lines. Up to the top you go. We're wasting valuable time now. We're coming up to one minute, ten seconds, and we've been with two elements on. The Belgians have three. No, they don't. As you were. The French have three. The Belgians coming up for the third. Where are we? We need to go up now for that. <laughs> the French are dropped there. We're in trouble. We're in trouble playing our joker. We're out now. We're out of the points. 135. But I want to see the British. Oh, Wendy. Well, the boys are bombing. Get the hat on. We must We must get in some points. That hat must go on. We're coming out of limit time. They must get the hat on. They must get the hat on to get in the points. Oh! And we're really having a torrid time now. That's limit time. Our joke has gone. And we only have on, as you can see on the right, the nose and the bow tie. The Belgians have got the bow tie, the nose and the hat. They've got three elements on. So, a rough start for Darlington. We've got it all to do. It was a brave joker, but didn't come off. For Chartres, two minutes. Oh, dead on. Just in limit time for Chartres. The Belgians have three, as we know, and we have two. We have two. A wasted joker. Six points for the Italians. Oh, my Oscar. My machine wheel and listen to those cowbells that's in the audience here. They're going potty. You can't hear yourself think. Shards pick up four. That's all there with their joker. Six points. Four points for Darlington. And for Veldhoven. And Execo. Holland, two points. Two points. So at the top in the lead, Pepon's there. And we go to the first round of the Phil Rouge and Dunkelidium. 
Well, I told you it's about hungry bears. Well, behind there, you're going to see six bears, one from each country, and they're trying to steal pots of honey. And we'll see, the, there they are, the pots of honey. There's 20 altogether. And that young lady there, it's the first team to go in Germany, incidentally, she's going to direct that man there who's going to run through five holes and try and stop the bears getting <laughs> the bears getting the, the honey. Now they can do all sorts of things. They can duck on there, they can see how it is. The ram rod out, trying to knock him down. There's five holes, and she's giving the instructions. Comes an unexpected sort. Twenty in all. One and a half minute duration. And the score will be 20 honey pots less those that are stolen. One from each team, of course. Germany going in this personal route. And of course, you know that no joker. You can hear the instructions being given. There's the bears after those pots of honey. And these, these, these boys have got to get together, actually. They've got to get a, a working arrangement. And our bear on the left there, the Great Britain one, is Frank Johnson. Uh, we'll be seeing quite a bit of him, so we'll to talk about that later. He's got to go around with pots of honey. Round, that doesn't count. And there's only one at the moment. So this is a good start if it remains at one for the German team two. <laughs> yes, that's all right. He's got to go around that pole on the right. Get enough to time and two, so we make it eight. Well, it may be three. I don't know. It could be three. Let's see what Guido Pankow has got to say. So, on the way forward, it's 18, so there were two stolen. And if all... And this is the man whose great moment was staying in the gold from Stan Matthews. Yes, it is, when uh, England beat Switzerland 8 0. But in the background, you see what the game's all about. You see two peasants there, and they are from uh, Italy and Germany, and the joker being played. Let's see if you can play the Alpen horn. Listen. Brilliant. Wunderbar. Wunderbar. But the two boys in the background have got to carry those bales of hay. Half a hundred weight of hay. And you'll see a very interesting situation develop across the pool. Because these peasants have to go across the plank to the middle of the pool, push down the truss of hay, and coming in the opposite direction you have two lady tourists from the same team. They have to negotiate the truss of hay and the peasant. And a little ducking for the two tourists from Iosta. Only one in. But this is the game. They have to cross the bale of hay and go back across the plank, across the pool, to the other side. And when both tourists, plus their banks, are safely across, that's the end of the game. We play, but we go in the last heat. Three heats of two. Three heats of two. That's a little... Fräulein, and she's finished. And they're in again, they off in the whole lot, no. Oh, shooting, and she goes in. He's in. <laughs> the bail's in. It's disaster for my officer. But there the German flag's waving away. The Germans, we made it, oh, well under a minute. But uh, that's one young lady across. And they have to get the bale of hay back on, and that must weigh now by at least a hundred weight. He's done very well, that lad. He's coming up to limit time, though. They're going to be counted out of time because the game is one minute, 30 seconds duration. A lap and a lack. Out of time for Iosta. Next will go the Swiss and the Belgians, and of course the Dutch playing their joker of the last team with Great Britain. Leonberg, 53 seconds. 53 seconds for Leonberg. The Italians out of time. Here we go. 
Gilles Villot as West team from just the other side of the mountain. A small village of 3,000 people. They should be able to play this game well. The Belgians of Papelstel. I'll not speak much during this because there's lots of cowbells going on. Feet to stride. But one of the Belgian girls has taken the ducking and the other one might as well. That Baylor Hay looks very unsteady. The Swiss bands are going as well. And in the background, you can see there the Darlington contingent with the Union Jacks. They've been traveling all night to get here. One Swiss, Swiss Smith across. The Belgians of Papenstera in a bit of trouble. <laughs> in a lot of trouble. <laughs> The two hat boxes coming over for Gilles Villou. And we make it, they're, uh, they're not going to beat the Germans. Now this is interesting, a little clinch. How oh, can they do it? <laughs> it takes two to tango in the middle of Engelberg. Oh, they're coming in. Yes, they've done it. And we make it 120. 120 for the Swiss and the Belgians and all sorts there. It could be no, 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 for Pepin's there. No, 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 out of time. A special applause for the Dr. Elio. That time says Hamburg is supporting Leonberg, which is rather strange because Leonberg is further south in Stuttgart. So, also we have for Belgium 0, 0, 0, out of time. For Pepin's there, leider. Pepin's there, out of time, but the interesting time is the, is the Swiss, 122. Now we'll go Great Britain against Holland. There is, there's Colin, our man. Young Colin. It looks a bit heavy and it is. Half a hundred weight of hay. He pops it down. Coming in the opposite direction, our lady tourists are Janet McKee and Nancy Warnock. A couple of PE teachers, so they should be pretty well balanced for this game. Now that's interesting. He's sitting astride. Now we've seen this technique fail already. Twice already. The Italians tried it. It didn't work. It's very difficult to balance on top. We're all holding up. We have one across, but the Dutch are playing the joker on this, of Beltoven. So it's very important for that little lass there. That's Marianne. She works at a shop, so she's used to carrying hat boxes. But we're, are we going to win it? We're doing well. We're not going to beat the German time, but we could. We could come second here. We could come second. We're in. We're in the point. Boys and girls, we're in the point. Yes. We make it there. One minute and eight seconds. But, well, they're rejoicing. Nancy and uh, Janet, and there's the Darlington Convention, you see, with all the little signs, 150 years of railway history, Darlington celebrates, and they're celebrating in the middle of Engelberg tonight. Well, here we go, let's see what we got. A bomb zieht für Welthofen 1-0-9. Aber Großbritannien 1-0-8. Und nur besser yes, zieht für Darlington 1-0-8. Well, that's good. Und jetzt der Punkt verdammt. They have a lot to do. Wasted the joker on the first Anschein game, but they could come Sieben. along. Good Sieben. team. Sieben. Have every confidence. Großbritannien 5 Punkte. 5 Punkte für Darlington. 6 for the Holland. Germans, 5 for the joker. British. 8 Punkte. 2 mal 4 für Welthofen. And the Dutch rather wasted their joker, Ach, picking up just 8 points. Spielen. Schweiz, three points. Kiswil, three points. Let's win three. Let's win the cowbells again. Here we go. What a racket. And Belgium, one point. And the look at the table shows us... So, in the lead at the moment. The, the Dutch with ten points, but we are second with nine. The Swiss are third with eight. Fourth by Oster, equal Pepinster and the Bill Rouge Edward. And the charge from France to go in the second to lose. The hungry bears will come any moment on the whistle. One and a half minutes and 20 possible. 
thought they were going to be knocked off there, but they were it was one, but the honeypot's still on 20 honeypots, and of course, that's the one that's stolen. And the girl, who is a, a teacher, giving instructions to the boy below, who is a gardener, incidentally, and there he is. See how he's pushing the rum rod through, and they can't hold on to that, by the way, they mustn't hold on. No sign, Jake. Oh, there's one on, one on. Two, of course, for the first team, which was uh, uh, the Germans. And there, Frank Johnson, trying to creep underneath. Frank Johnson is uh, quite a, an active gymnast, actually, so this is a little different to his usual role of sport. He's a joiner. There he is. He's rushing up, but he can't hold it. And he's, as he got his ten, they've got to go around the pole. Still pushing and helping one another. Somebody's going to try and climb over the top. There's one, two, three, I think. Four with this one. And he's getting near to the one. The duration. This each in line, man, but it's too late to get. I think it's four. So that will be 16 if we... I've written that up correctly. Oh, the wet board in some rough weather around these parts, as you can possibly see. 16 after the second hill route. Well, there's Jan here by just complaining slightly about the weather because it is rather less than clement. But uh, he is standing next to the Swiss version of a bull ring, and here comes the German. Joker, listen. Wunderbar. A touch of the Wagner's. The German joker being played by Leon Berg. And in the background you see over Jan's shoulder, the bull. And the bull has to charge down those three mushrooms. This is the Swiss bull of Gisbeu. You see there are two boys in the bull costume. He's got... He's got... He's got a bunch... He has to charge down the mushroom, as you can see. They are competitors of a different country. <laughs> she is shouting, would you believe, in German, at the Swiss bull, the two boys in the bull costume. <laughs> He's fought them down in fright. Sheer fright, well done, she's feel. We make it 29 seconds for three mushrooms. That's the game, it's in six heats. It's a marvelous game, you really enjoy this one. I think you've got the score now. Zeit, großartige Zeit. 28 seconds. 28 seconds. So the girl at the top of the tower steers the ball, if she can, with the ropes around the ball's horns. And she also shouts, obviously, in the language of the country. So next will go the ball from Iosta. She's at the top. The little signorina will shout in Italian. You know lots of Italian by now. Sinestra, 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 Sinestra. And three boys from another country in the mushroom get out. Now watch this game. Listen. I'm afraid I just led you. That is not a ball, as you can see. It's a very large, very large cow. <laughs> Looks like a set of bagpipes from here. <laughs> He might get the third if he comes in between. <laughs> yes. Oh, lovely. Well, the poor thing is that did the third mushroom count. Yes, he did. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Two. Two mushrooms. Five champignons. Now the Germans are going to go, and of course, Leon Berg are playing their joker. Mm -hmm. 
Stuttgart, Hans Stettli hat aber viel moderne Industrie. Wir spielen wie ein Joker. Und da hat es den Joker gespielt. 3, 2, 1. About 60 miles west of Paris. We did a program from there. A lovely city. We'll see how they shape. Mushroom and bull game, is it? It's like the real thing in Spain. This, it's, it's gonna have to knock him down. Knock him down. One thing. <laughs> he collapsed sheer fatigue. <laughs> Don't that <know> one. <laughs> He's boring it to death. Yes, well done, shot. And well done, that little, that little girl on the top there. She was blowing her fruit. Frankreich war noch in der Zeit. Die das Resultat für Frankreich 58 Sekunden. Für Chartres 58 Sekunden. 58 Seconds for Chartres. So the German joker looks a good one to have played. But now we'll go the Dutch last of all. 
Beltoven will go. And all you boys and girls listening in tonight speak fluent Dutch. We will understand every word. German Joker worth much less than 12 points. The time for Holland is 43 seconds. Oh, rapid. 43. There they go. The firecrackers going up. The commander house in the background there is the... Uh, the Civic Hall here in Engelberg, but the points going up. Giesfield 6, Beldorven 5. The Germans with their jokers, and you can hear it above the din. 8 points, another wasted joker. The third joker in a row, not to gain maximum points. Sharp pick up 3. I hope to 2. And just one for the Belgians, so now the Swiss and the Germans. In second place, but in the lead, Beltoven Eddie. And it's Darlington to go in the Phil Rude. Can they get a better than 18 and 16? Can they keep all those spots of any? Well, it's up to David Stott. He'll be putting the armor up through, and there's the K. Metcalf giving instructions. She knows all about 10 pin bowling. Well, there's one down. Of course, the uh, Darlington lad is not a bear at the moment. It's the six other countries. David Stott, weightlifter, rugby champion, amateur boxing champion. Well, quite a bit of stake here. And there he is. David Stott is really bouncing through, but there's one, there's two at the moment, I think. That's the second. Other scores, 18 and 16. Can you hear Kay? Giving her instructions. Now there are five holes in which he can uh, put his rammer through. One and a half minutes and looks like three. We could have done with them an intact of the 20, having uh, made a bit of a blurb on the Joker. And now they're, they're here, come out, one, two, three, four, about six, maybe. Oh, the 20 and the have really gone for a burden. Of course, some have been dropped. Is it on? No, he's taking that one off. So it looks like, well, we'll wait and see what Guido Pancaldi says, but it's not good anyway. 18 for Germans, France, 16, and, oh, dear, 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 dear. Not very good. 12 honeypots only saved. Well, there are six girls who are going butterfly hunting. In the background, you can see suspended from the wires the butterflies underneath the giant haystack in the foreground where they put the butterflies when they catch them. And that's how they catch them with a racket, a squash racket. Six girls on the whistle rush to the haystack and they have to belt down the butterflies from the skies. And uh, we fancy ourselves in this game. It was a bad field rouge for us, but Darlington could make it up here. Margaret Davison, a school teacher, is our girl, and she is, would you believe, chairman of Darlington Ladies Badminton Club. So if she can't bat a few butterflies down, nobody can. But that's one for the Belgians, one for us. 
That's the idea. They've got to get them down from the night sky. This is the game. You see, when they've got a butterfly, they come and put it on the ramp. But they've got to catch it cleanly. One for the Germans. Where are we in all this? Come on, chairman of Darlington ladies. The Dutch have one. The Germans have two. And we're still... And we got one. No, that's the French. That's Margaret. Come on, my love. Up you go. She's hitting them, but you've got to catch them in the racket before they count. She can do it sprouting about six inches. The French have one, the Dutch have one, the Germans have two. So near, so far. Have we got one yet? Yes, we have. At long last, Margaret's caught one. Three minutes of a game. Come on, my love. You've got to start jumping. We're about halfway through the game. <laughs> Getting tired. Yes, we have another one. So oh, come on. How are we doing? Yes, the Belgians are in. The Dutch have two. The Germans have two. We have two. Margaret Davidson, come on. Yes, we've got three. She's got the rhythm. She's in it now. She's in the match. We're in the points. We need a few points, too, because that was a lousy few rouge we had. And, of course, we wasted our joker on the first game, picking up an A4 points. But we're in the lead in this game. The rules say three in fastest time. And if she has got three on, then we've won the match. There we are. Three butterflies in 2.03. That was a marvelous performance by Margaret Davis. Nothing for Papenstern. Two for Leonberg. Similarly for Schart. Nothing for Schiefel and they don't like it. Ooh. Six points, it looks good. There they go again, they're celebrating. Beltoven, five. Pepponster, also five. That's better. It's five. It's five for Germany. Five for Schott. Which seems rather unfair to pick up five when we picked up six of one. But anyway, Eddie, go on. Alastor of Italy. Not played uh, the joker yet, but they can't play it on this game. They're chasing 18-16 and Darlington's 12 and there's the 20. Honey Potts with the Hungry Bears are after. And there's the rammer as he's called. If you're interested, and his name is Luciana and there is Nadine Capitana. And it's rather interesting to see the different tactics that they have, the Bears. Our Bear will be back and it'll be Frank Johnson member of the Darlington Gymnastic Team, which won the National League Championship in 73-74. I need to get some of these honeypots down, unless we're going to, that is, we being Darlington, unless we're going to finish rather low in the Tour Rouge. They won. So they're doing very well. Now, Oster, who are lying in position at the moment, only got nine points on, so they'll be very happy if they can get some of these honey pots. Safe and intact, just one. They're dropping them, and uh, if they've gone round the post, it's all right. And I assume that was all right. They're gathering up three, three where you can count that yourself, can't you? Frank Johnson. He needs to help if he could get one. Come on, Frank. Oh, yeah. He, he was really knocked out. He, if it was a real solar plexus, boy, didn't expect that one. It looks like three, and if we're right, that makes it something and not good news as far as Darlington is concerned. So we'll see. Italian is 16, 
Büchsen. 16. Still three still to go on the Bill Rouge. Do it. Thanks, Ed. This is the milk churn game. There are five guys there from different countries, obviously. And we are second from the right. And they are milk churns, and they are going to be bowled down with a very, very large snowball. A couple of Germans at the top of the ramp there, two German boys, roll the ball down the ramp, and two little girls, there you see them, two Fräulein, at the bottom, guide that ball and knock down the milk churns. It's not nine pins, it's five pins. So off they go. <laughs> We've been covered. Well, if they get all five, it'll be a remarkable performance by Leonberg. We've had a bit of practice here in the past three days, and nobody's covered all five. Best score so far being three. Big foam rubber balls. And another one. One more to go. Can they do it? No. There's the whistle. It's a one minute game. So it's four cans for Leosberg. Two elements of scoring, all five in the shortest possible time, or as, as many as you knock down. The Germans have gone. Now the French. The French from Chartres. Chasing four. Oh, that was a good throw. He's going to hit somebody hard. <laughs> a poor Belgian is taking a, taking a batting tonight. But they're heavy. They began very heavy with a lot of rain on them. They're, they're really pushing very well. Probably it's a very good score for Leonberg. Absolutely. They're very heavy. They must be, what, half hour away to peace, soaking up all the rain that's been falling from the sky here in Switzerland for the past three days. Whoops. A gentle touch. <laughs> it threw itself down. That was a way. It all depends now on the two girls at the bottom of the ramp guiding that ball. Well, it's getting really heavy now. In fact, the team who went first have an advantage here because those balls would have picked up quite a lot of rain from the market square. The team going last will definitely be handicapped. But there's the whistle. We are going next to the last. But as I told you earlier on, we have some strong boys in the Darlington team. We expect a good score. Would you believe the bells are getting... Everybody has a, a thing about the bell. They always have it knocked down. Yeah. And it's getting really heavy. You can see now. It's a tough game. This. That's Glauco. And behind him, Enrico. You can see just how heavy the balls are really getting, but every time they go down, they pick up more water. They have one so far. What have we got? Two, three, four, four. The Italians doing well. Coming up to the bit time, though, we make it with, what, three seconds to go. Will this one count? No, it won't. Four. The same score as Leonberg. Now we'll go the Swiss. Now listen to the racket with this one. You'll be able to know when they've knocked somebody down. Listen.
They're going to have to give it the extra push at the top of the ramp. It's become so heavy now that the normal input, that's better, a big push. And this will get somebody. Ah. I hope Darlington are watching this one very carefully, these Swiss, because you have to give it that extra push at the top to give it the impetus to propel that very heavy wet ball. It'll get somebody. Yes, will it? The Belgians? No, over the top. Five seconds to go. Will this one count? Will it count, Edward? Will it count? No, it won't. <laughs> Got one of the touch judges instead. For the Schweiz, two. For Giswil, two. Pranne. Next in Mannschaft. Two for Giswil. Darlington will go. Our pushers are Douglas and James. And it's got a count because Janet, McKee, Nancy Warnock are at the bottom and they have to guide that ball. Now give it a shove, lads. Give it a big shove. And Nancy and Janet have got to guide it. We've got somebody. The poor old Belgian again. I tell you, the big strong boys, these. If anybody can get this game one, it's these Darlington fellas. Have we yet? Yeah. German, two down, three to go. Can we get all five? Can we do it? A uh, next to push. Give it a push. There's a big gap in the middle. But it's now they've got to get. Oh, they've, they've got the gap. A waste of ball. You can't afford to do that. Come on. Janet and Nancy at the bottom. They have to guide it. An extra push at the top. We've got to get four to be in the point. Oh, come on. Rather interesting there, the French are doing tactics. I don't know whether it's allowed, but it must be walking up and down and the boy yes. in it. But have we got three? I think we have three. We shall soon know. Yes. I yes. think we have three. Three, three. But it's not enough. It's not enough. It. By walking up and down. Three. We needed to get four to come into something like maximum points. But last will go the Belgians of Papenster. Oh, oh, nearly two for the prize of one. And they have two. Those two little girls at the bottom, I tell you, guiding it. They have to guide. And the mill turns are now moving about. Obviously, five milk churns on a narrow plank, you can't move so far, but when you've knocked one or two down, you can make the gaps. Oh, that's our lad there. That's Malcolm Stringer. The strongest man in Great Britain in about the early 50s, I think he was. Malcolm, big strong boy. Uh, we're coming up to limit time. They're not going to do it. That ball won't count. Two for the Belgians. So we're running to five points with a bit of luck. Two for Pepinster. Result: Germany six points. Six points anyway for the Italians of Austria. Four points rather for Darlington. Three. Eddie and uh, Leonberg are actually leading the Phil Rouge at the moment, but uh, Veltoven might be the team to just get 19, one above. They're usually very bright as a judge when it comes to this sort of a game. And the girl who's talking is Nettie Negger. Uh, 
and the pusher is from Evers. I think there's one. Is Stop it, Flo, yes. You see how they get in a little bit tangled up to try to duck up there and get past, because it can only be one place at one time when it starts pushing the ramrod through. Three. It's stuck in. He's under his chin, is this bear? So it's the hungry bear. And there, <laughs> that's one way for Frank. Doing a very good job there. One, two, three, four, five, we think. Let me think. At least it might be a bit useful to uh, Darlington. If Frank can pinch one. Has he got one? He's got one now, then. It's a question of getting past the Netherlands pusher, but he doesn't. Too late. But one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, well, we'll wait for the official announcement. I be able, making sure that the right numbers going up with Guido from Ah, well, so Darlington are not going to finish at the bottom. Three jokers, remaining jokers being played on game number six. A game which is always a feature of the Swiss program, the Middleweight game. Up she goes, and a flower will appear, pushed up through the ramp by a teammate you can't see. A game in two heats of three teams. And I'll show you, or rather tell you, the method of propulsion, how those girls are getting up their ramp will be revealed to you very shortly. <laughs> They're being pulled up by two fellows who are blindfolded. They can't see when the girl on the sledge is at the top. The Swiss have two. It's the shortest time for three flowers. In the middle, the British. How are we doing? Our darling to do. They're concentrating on the Swiss who finished the game. One for the Germans. So how are we doing in the middle? The British, how are the British doing? Get the British girl inching away very, very slowly up. It's Margaret Davison again. How are we doing? As far as she goes down the other side, stop! The only way those two guys have of knowing where she is is from her verbal instructions. She's shouting to them all the time. And the girl has to say that we've nothing... Have we, have we got a flower? No. We've nothing yet. That's Margaret marooned at the top of the mountain. And she disappeared from view around the other side. The two guys are blindfolded, as I tell you, they can't. They can't. Here comes the center, where's Margaret? And that's the end of the game. It's a game of two minutes duration. Collecting the Edelweiss. The time for three Edelweiss for the Germans, 1.37. We have nothing at all. Well, it can't be worse than that. And one minute for the twist. And the rain is coming down, even heavier. But the twist flags are going up, the firecrackers are going off, the cowbells are clanging. And in the second heat will go the Dutch, the French, the Italians. Can you see in the background, the top of the picture now, those two guys pulling on the ropes. They are blindfolded, They've no idea where that girl is. The Gementi House in the background. And there the monastery, the Benedictine monastery. Now it doesn't count, it's got to go in the there you see the blindfold guys. And then we're gonna heat that girl straight over. That's the Dutch girl. She's over, ta-ta. <laughs> there's, there's the fellow who's trying to pull the back, he's gone too. 
There's the Dutch sledge, and she'll be running around the apparatus. Back down the mountain you go, my love. And the poor girl underneath the mountain is also instructed, and she's lost her skirt. Showing her fancy pants, but that doesn't matter. You've got to stay on the sledge. You must keep on the sledge. You're not allowed to get off. Up from the Edelweiss. Tatar, back down the ramp she goes. She's the Dutch girl. In the middle, the French from Chart. On the right, the Italian Sayosta. So it could be three. It could be three and a half for the French in a fast time. Is it? Yes, it is. Looks like the third one. No, it's not. We can't tell. There's the Italian charging instructions, helping them. The team captain allowed to help. Because there's so much din going on here in the square with all the car bills, it's very difficult to know who's speaking to whom and saying what. Coming up to limit time of two minutes. <laughs> There's our comment position. We're in the middle of that lot somewhere with the light shining. This is the distance with the shining. For Holland, one minute, one The time for Beethoven at the bottom, 131. Oh, another fast time from France. I also 148. So the Germans are being backed back, inch by inch. Look at this. The Swiss Joker. There we are. And listen to, listen to the gin, it's absolute bedlam here. We can't hear our old drink for 10 points for the French. The Dutch at the bottom, four points. Three points for Leon Berg. A wasted joker for the Italians, only four points. And just one point for the British. Well, it's opening up now. The Swiss in the lead with 30 points. The Germans are second with 28. Third are the French of Schart with 25. Fourth at the bottom, the Dutch, 24. Fifth, the Darlington with 26. The Italians. Last, the Belgians with only 12. But warming up into a competition, Edward. Look at it. There it is. The rain bucketing down. And the, the Bill Rouge, my love. It's uh, Belgium to go. Leon Berg, Germany. 18 at the moment. So, we need to better that if we're going to stop the Germans getting the maximum seven points. This is Belgium. You can hear the instructions being given by Lillian and Christian Marquette pushing the ramrod through. And the interfair is successful, these hungry bears chasing their pots of honey. Frank Johnson does one, two now. And if we go around the pole, which it does all right, three. They're all right once we go around the pole, but it's easy to drop them. They're all right, but must first go around that pole, and we think we've got four. Now there's Frank doing his uh, body piece and trying to crawl under now. Oh, he, he nearly lost them. Under one of those. No, it won't count from that. No, it doesn't count. Five. The Swiss go last, and they're a leading at the moment. He will, and they will go last in the field. Rouge is going to get that. It's somewhere <laughs> holding on in the top. Rather painful. Two, four, four, six, seven, eight. There's only four left on the top, but of course, a lot have been dropped en route. Time running out now, and there it is indeed for Belgium. And we'll wait, as always, for the official pronouncement, this time by Gennaro. The first result is 11 bucks. 11 bucks for Belgium. So it's all going to be on the last bill route to see whether Germany takes the seven points. And here is Jan with the secret of the magic box. There are six of those boxes. And in the background, you have the fellows who are going to try and find them. But now, where do they find them? 
In the giant haystack. Hidden away. This is a needle in the haystack game, Swiss style. Six laps on the whistle. We'll dive in that haystack and you will see absolute bedlam. And there is David Stott. Ah, British. Yes, he's 21 today, David Stott. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, little David. Happy birthday to you. Oh, okay. what a splendid gesture. That was lovely. The crowd joining in. And the Darlington Commission waving away. David Stott, 21 today, weightlifter, North of England, amateur boxing champion. Junior Mr. North of England. So he's up to him, he's 21 today and gets the key of the door if he gets that box. If he finds the box first, Engelberg will belong to David Stott. <laughs> a little wrestling going on there with the Belgians and David. Where are the boxes? <laughs> I suspect they'll be very, very deep there. I don't think you find anything on the top there, David. You've got to go deep. Oh, would it be nice? 21 today, if you could just find the box. <laughs> Italian, very deep under the St. Bernard Party thing. Well, they've got two and a half minutes on the game. And it's coming up to one minute and we found nothing. David, where are you? At the bottom. They're in there, I assure you. We have one. It's the Belgian. Well, he's 42. Not today, but he's very pleased with himself. David, where are you? He's in the back. <laughs> well, it's gone quiet over there. The Belgians have already got theirs. That was Joe, he was called. He's the oldest fellow I've seen in knockout. He's 42 years old. There's David, 21, half his age. How are we doing? That's Tom. Tom from Holland. The Frenchman is called Guy. He's a chauffeur, by the way. That's Harold from Germany on the right, singing away. Now then, they're having a little consultation. How far down have you got to go? And that's the Italian. He's called the Amino. From Aosta. Lots of hay flying around. We're coming up now to 2 minutes 20 seconds. What have we got? Have we got one yet? Yes, he's got one. David's got one. Come on, let's get it on time. Put it on the pudding. Come on. Right. Well done, my lads. Look at that. 21 today. Bravo. Bravo. And you, you bet your boots it is. And that's worth five points. Yes. Okay. He gets the box. You'll treasure that for life, young David. Well done. Uh, so. Now then, how will they score this? Uh, Obviously, the Belgian picked up six points. This game has had a high score of 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Two teams have all come. But they have shown that this game is possible. And the other teams will only get one point. They will continue to search. So, I think he said one point for those who didn't get anything. Six points for the Belgian from the Belgians. We'll pick up five, that's for sure. One point. Yes, it's one point apiece for them all, as you said. So it's opened up a new vista for us. From being no hopers, we're suddenly there. We're racing with a slender chance. There it is. He gets his gift. David gets his gift. You won't see it. But at the moment, the Swiss in the lead with 30. Second, Leonberg, 29. Third, Sharpie, 26. We come with fourth with 25. Sixth, the Oster. Equal fourth, 25. The Dutch. Last, the Monster. And for the last two rules, Jed Wolf. No. And this is going to be their old battle because that's the Swiss sign and they want to beat Germans who have got 18. 
So how this gun they get? Those are the 20 honey pots. And it's going to be, could be a battle between the Swiss and the Germans. If not, it will be a joint second place, France and Italy 16. So 18 for Germany, 16 France, 12 for Great Britain, 16 for Italy, 9 for Netherlands, 11 for Belgium. And it's now all on this last field route before we know how many points they're going to get. Now that's a bit of a tricky one. And the Swiss cowbells going at full pressure, they know the value of it. Darlington obviously uh, down the list at the moment, but to win tonight they need a second place and more than 40 points. Or Swansea in second place, 40 points. They're the best British team so far. One, two, I think only four or five. Six, seven. So this is a, a good uh, Phil Rouge for Leonberg. They're going to get the, the point. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's quite a lot. And it doesn't have any effect other than it be useful if it's under 12 for... Uh, Red Britain, Darlington have got 12. Oh, it is under that. That's another useful point for Darlington. So the set point going to Liam Berg. There it is. Six points. Six points. Six points. The chart takes it up to 32. The Germans on 36. Six for after. And a nice useful four points. 29 for Darlington, 3 for Belgium, 2 for Switzerland, uh, great disappointment to their big home crowd here, and 1 to Veldhoven. So, what's going to be the final one? First, Leonberg, second, Charter, do it. Well, there it is, the Germans are favourites, uh, four points clear of their nearest challenges the Swiss and the and the French uh, we are just looking on I'm, a, I'm afraid because this last game is the great ski race eight team members five boys three girls on short skis they're the short skis they were measured for them this afternoon every ski or every pair of ski spits they are chained together as you see and all seven teams go as usual in this last race and you can see what the weather's like. It's simply bucketing down outside. The rain is turning to sleet. And they have to charge up the mountain. All teams up the mountain, down the other side. They're the favorites, the Germans. If they finish in the first four, they will win the silver Jason Frontier trophy. There, the team's ready. Yes, we are, led by Malcolm, the big strong boy. We'll make a good showing here, but I don't think we're gonna do anything. There's the Germans. Favourites, four points clear. They have to finish in the first four tonight and they'll pinch the silver just on Pontier Trophy. If they do it, it'll be the third time in four heats the German team has won. They will have to suffer a grave calamity. <laughs> the Dutch are scraping up, up the top. There go the Italians. Here come the French, a shout. The French could make it, the Swiss could make it. If the Germans finish in last position, Anything could happen. The Germans aren't doing so well at the moment. There's a long way to go. The French from Chart in disarray. Here come the Germans. But they have to finish with their skis on. 56 skiers, 112 skis, belting up and down the mountain here. There are the Italians with their game. The Italians of Iosta. Up the other side, they go. The Italians, the French, the Dutch. But the Swiss have got to finish well. The French could come. The Italians well out of it. 
But the Italians, if they finish first, could make it easier for the Germans. The Italians on their game, all mountaineers. A great skiing resort, Ionta. Here they come, clomping away. They've got to get the skis intact, chained together. Here they come to victory. And they could win the trophy for the Germans. There are the Italians finishing. There are the Dutch. On the other side, the Belgians. Where are the British? The Italians have done it. But here come the Germans. The French are finishing. Here come the Germans. They've picked up to finish well. If they're in the first four, they've won it. Here's the Dutch. There are the Belgians. And on the far side, the British struggling home. And there are the Swiss on their game. A poor finish for them because we finished, everybody's finished, the Swiss come in last, which is a great disappointment for the home crowd, and somebody's lost. They've lost a team member en route. But the Germans have won it. I'm, I'm sure they've won it. The Swiss are out. Here, here we come, the final position. First by Ostak. Second, the French. But we needed the Germans to finish last to make it a difference. They finish third and they win it. Fourth, the Dutch. Fifth, Van We finish sixth. And disappointingly, Gisville, for the home crowd, finish last. So the seven points will go to the Italian. Thanks to 33. Six points for Schart. Five for Leonberg. 41 points. Nobody can touch that. Belgien drei Punkte. Three points for the Belgian. Two points for us. And just one point for the Swiss. Well, there it is. Another win for the Germans. The third in the series of four so far. Leonberg the winner. Second for Schart. Third is Will. Equal third, Aosta. Fifth for Darlington. Sixth, Beldhoven. And seventh, Bevonster. Well, a great competition. Again played out in the pouring rain here in the Alpine resort of Engelberg. All the festivities start. All the cowbells. You can hear them all. Firecrackers going off. Nothing will deter this crowd from celebrating. The German flags waving away. But a happy day for young David there of Darlington. 21 today. He gets the key of the door plus the box. The balloons are going up. There's the weather for you. Everybody's saturated, but nobody seems to care. A wonderful, I thought, wonderful event tonight, Edward. Well, 31 Darlington. They needed a second place, of course. So Swans is still retained their title at the head of the table. Second place, 40 points. And that's what Kilmarnock will want. Next to beat next week. And they, of course, won their heat at Gurek in Scotland. And they'll be playing at Mannheim, Germany, while this German team celebrate here in this very, very lovely spot of Engelberg. Good night. Well, there's the victorious team of, uh, of Leonberg celebrating away in the pouring rain here. About the competition, though. A little disappointing for Darlington. We played a lousy joker and we were even worse on the field route. There it is. All the festivities start in the pouring rain, so we'll say goodnight.